Hello and welcome to my channel, hope everybody's safe and well. In this video we're going to be talking about dynamic pivot. Now if you would like to follow along with the video, I do have the scripts available in the description below that you can just copy and paste into a database client tool such as SQL Server Management Studio. So what I'm doing first of all is just creating a table of data that has some customers, some products and some amounts. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute that query first of all, just create the table and then select all from it. So we have here some various customer IDs, different products and amounts. Um, and we're just going to first of all look at what that would look like in terms of performing a pivot operation. And if you are new to performing pivot, there are other videos on my channel. I will leave some links in the description and you'll see some um, some links coming up on the screen as well if you want to go and check those out first of all. So if I have a look at a pivot query here, you can see I've got a number of products. Um, I've got monitors, laptops, PCs, etc. And I'm simply just summing the amount for the products uh, in each of those those values by customer ID. So if I just have a look at the results of this query, we can see we've got customer ID, the amount that customer spent on monitors, laptops, PCs, and so on. Now, that's a, a, a straightforward pivot example. But the problem with Pivot is it's very hard coded, it's very fixed, it's very static. If we used to have, add new products to our line, that would mean amending this query. And I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. So as we can see here, we haven't got a product of television, uh, but here's a, an insert script just to insert some television sales. So we're just inserting three rows and if I go ahead and have a look at my pivot query again and execute it, it's not automatically going to pick that up. In fact, I have to come in here and manually add that new product to this query. So I need to add it to the sum amount and then to the final select. So if we're performing pivots on data that changes rapidly. We can see television has now been added. But if we're performing pivot operations on data that can change, it can be quite cumbersome to manage our pivot queries. So looking at a dynamic pivot is a way to overcome that problem. Now I should explain that in this video we are looking to make the column list dynamic. So this is gonna be part one of a small series I'm doing about dynamic pivoting. And there are further ways we can make our pivot queries dynamic. Also, if you are using SQL Server 2017 onwards or Azure SQL database, there will be a shortcut to this process because you'll see this process is quite it involves a lot of different functions so you should be made aware you should learn a lot of new functions available within SQL Server today um, but keep an eye out for that video because if you are using SQL Server 2017 onwards it's a lot simpler than what we're going to go through today I guess the good thing about dynamic pivoting is once you've built it there's that's it, it's, it's there and it's available for you to use. And there is a lot of dynamic pivot query examples available online, but I'm gonna be breaking it down step by step, explaining what we're doing and why. I'm going to open a new query window. And the first thing we're looking to do is to build a distinct comma separated list of values within square brackets that we can pass into our pivot query. Sorry, that's not the first thing, that's our ultimate goal. So we're going to start off with just a simple query of returning our distinct product names from our orders table. So we're just going to write select distinct product from DBO 
orders. And there's currently nine in there. I'm actually just going to reset the table. So I'm actually just going to drop that table and recreate it. Um, so we've got eight. So we can have a look at the difference between what we did at the start where we manually added the, the television product compared to our end result once we've written our dynamic pivot query. So we've now got our distinct list of products from our orders table and next we need to add well we need to return those values within square brackets or square parentheses whichever you prefer I'll just be referring to them as square brackets and for that we can use the quote name function now quote name returns a string uh, within a quote character and the default is square brackets so it's something that's commonly used within row level security I'll just give that an alias as we're using a function on that column so if I show you the results of that we can see now each product is wrapped within our square brackets and all we're going to do next is simply concatenate a leading comma and I'm just going to use plus for that because it's quite simple as we're using strings so I'm just going to add a leading comma to our query and if we have a look at our, our row set or result set now we can see each product shows as a comma and then the value within square brackets the result set is prepared but it's still pretty unusable for us at the moment it's a it's a row set that we're actually returning whereas ultimately we want that as a one single string a scalar value so the next thing we're going to do um, is introduce a XML output so we're going to convert this to return as XML and what we're going to use for that is for XML path and we'll see once we run this that that result is now returned as XML and I can actually click on this XML result and it will show me what that looks like so we can see here we've got each row what the and then the uh, the product element now we want to ideally get rid of the row so what we're going to add to our query is just a zero length string for XML path and that's going to remove the wrapper element let's run that query and we'll see the difference so we can see previously we had each row identified now we've just got each product identified now this result is still being returned as XML but we actually want it to be returned as a string so we can actually apply further processing if we did want to return XML then XML path or one of the other four XMLs is is what we'd use for that and by the way if you are new to these functions I'm going to leave some links to the Microsoft documentation where you will be able to find out more information so to allow us to work with this and perhaps run more um, sorry to allow us to work with this data on SQL Server Management Studio I'm just going to add a comma and the keyword type and we'll see that that result is no longer returned as XML so type means we it allows us to add further processing against this result so although it's still XML um, we've converted it to allow us to run things like X query against this data and if you're not familiar with X query it allows us to run queries against XML such as extracting elements that we're going to be doing shortly now we're going to build on this a bit further by extracting the data we need and returning it as a SQL data type and for that we can use the value method now we're going to be running that against effectively this so it's going to convert into a subquery so I'm just going to write select now I like to indent my subquery 
and then I'm going to put dot and value and value has to be in lowercase because working with X query is case sensitive as opposed to SQL uh, and then we're just going to put a single dot within apostrophes and then we're going to specify our data type as nvarchar max in this case it's probably a bit overkill but it just covers you if you do have a lot of products or a lot of values that you'll be converting and we close that off and now what that means is based on this query that we're showing the result set here for the value method allows us to run x query and this dot is our x query here in, in, in other words we're we're not running an x query this is just applying a simple conversion of that string to nvarchar max but we are extracting the individual values within the XML elements. If I run that query, we can see now we are left with something that looks a lot more usable to us. And again, if you'd like to read more about these methods, there will be some links in the description below. Now to finish off the query, we've got a problem here of this leading comma. And we could use some trimming string functions, but for that we'd have to detect the length of this string. We'd have to then get the length minus one and ex extract that number of right characters. But there is another function that we could use called stuff. And stuff is string manipulation, but it allows us to extract, sorry, replace values within their string or pad a string into this so stuff we, we've got the expression to be searched which is what's on the screen the starting position the number of characters and the replacement so that's uh we're going to start at one the length one and we're going to replace it with a blank value let's have a look at the results and now we can see we've actually got exactly what we were expecting. So we've got our list of values in a comma separated list within angled brackets or squared brackets. Now we have our way of building a list of columns dynamically. We're going to finish off with building a dynamic query. So first of all, we're going to select we're going to declare two variables. First, we're going to have our actual query, which is going to be run. Um, we're just going to set that as nvarchar max for now. And then we're going to have a column list. And again, we're going to set that as nvarchar max. Now, our column list is actually going to be this query we've built here. So if then we set columns equals and I'll just put that onto the next line I'll just hide the results grid so our columns is going to be the result of what we've built and then we're going to build out our query so set at query equals and it's going to be select customer ID and this is a string so I'll put an apostrophe round comma on the end of that we're going to close off that and then we're going to say plus at columns that's where we're going to drop in our dynamic columns and then plus that's going to be from then we're going to write a derived table query which is going to be select customer ID product and this is what I mean about this query not being fully dynamic so we're, we're still actually hard coding uh, aggregation function and the table we're actually selecting from so there's our initial derived table then we're going to perform a pivot operation 
I'll just scroll down. And again, it's going to be the same aggregation, sum amount for product in open our parentheses so close off our, our string and again this is going to be where we add in our columns just check that yep yeah. and then back to the string to add in the closing brackets close that off as our pivot uh, and then we're just going to order by customer ID and then we build a execute statement and for this we're using SP execute SQL and passing in a query parameter to change that so it works correctly so there we have a query so we're declaring two variables our query and our column list we've seen how we built our column list now how we add that into the dynamic query is we build out our, our static part of the query which in this case is going to be select customer ID we're going to close off the string at that point and add in the parameter sorry the variable value of columns we're going to open up that string builder again and add in our from then we're going to build in our pivot and again we're adding in closing off our string here adding in our column list and then opening our string again to close down the pivot query. Let's have a look at executing that query. And we can see now we've got the exact same results. Let's run our insert data because we don't have television within that data within the table again. So if I execute that query, return to my pivot and execute again without changing anything then we can see here we've had television added to our query. Now the one thing uh, about this uh, that's a bit of a challenge is the ordering of columns. You can see television hasn't been added on the end. But because this is a drive table that we pass as an input to our pivot query, it's difficult to order. Um, but that could be something we'll have a look at in the future. Uh, and when you are building dynamic queries as well, one thing you can also do is add in print or select. So if we print our query, that will return on the messages page for us exactly what that query looks like. Or we could, that's, that's uh, limited to a certain amount of characters, so if we're building a large query we can actually add it as a select of the query, uh, and then we just need to paste it into a new query window, uh, but the formatting doesn't work very good. So I really hope you have enjoyed that video. Give building dynamic pivot queries a try and let me know your thoughts. Like I say, if you are using SQL Server 2017 or Azure SQL Database, which is always up to latest, uh, sorry, SQL Server 2017 onwards, then keep an eye on the channel as you will see a video showing you a massive shortcut to this process. It has been made a lot easier. I will also do uh, some other parts to this, which is where we're making the query more, even more dynamic as well. Thanks a lot for watching.